Hello friends, this is Scott back in my home office. It's February 21st and it is kind of a snow day. It's not a heavy snow, but we're supposed to get one to three inches today. So I thought it'd be a good day to finish a video that, that I've been working on for some time. It's a video it's, or it's a topic that'll never be completed. It's something that's ongoing that I'm gonna to discuss today. Now I used to have all grass in my yard. You know, the front yard, the backyard, very little plantings, just all grass, just the standard suburban yard. I've been in my house 20 years and in that time I've had many gardening ideas and I've changed my my backyard you know numerous times I put in a lot of time a lot of effort a lot of resources but I just keep changing it which I guess that's what you do when you get bored and living in the city and you don't have a lot of opportunities to do you know with a lot of property anyway but a couple of years ago I decided you know I was basically introduced to the back to Eden garden method by a guy named Paul Gauchi who's a YouTube guy and what it basically means is that, and the philosophy is that the earth knows what it's doing. It always covers the soil. Bare earth, you don't find in the natural world unless man creates that, basically. Having bare earth destroys the soil, destroys the organisms in the soil, the wind blows, the, the topsoil blows away, and uh, you just basically end up with sterile soil. So the whole back to Eden method in, in, in a backyard is to provide some type of a ground covering of four to six inches, which will suppress weeds, keep the moisture in the ground, all the beneficial soil life will interact with that layer of mulch and over time you'll have fertility and you'll have less weeding and you'll have a you know a very drought tolerant uh, landscape because of the mulch. Now you can use hay, you can use straw, you can use compost but you know various types of materials will break down at a faster rate. Paul Gauchy likes wood chips so I decided I was going to do the wood chip method and uh, I didn't have access to tree trim cuttings in the city, it's a little bit hit and miss, uh, trying to get a tree service to deliver, you know, stuff to you. If they dump it on the street, you know, you don't know when it's coming. You're pretty much at, their, at the mercy of, okay, that day I better get this done because the city will be all over me having that material in the street. So I decided I would just do truckloads of cedar bark to start with. It is not the recommended material. Generally, it'll work, and uh, I started with that. And then as time goes by, when I have access to other resources, I will continue to... Uh, to use different types of bark mulch. but So this video is all about how I turn my, my grass backyard into the back to Eden garden. And anytime you're just having bark, you need places to walk. So I had some access to quite a few paver, uh, or excuse me, flagstone stones that I could use as a pathway. I picked up some at the store. I've had some over the years. And then I had a friend contact me on Facebook, an old high school friend that was you know redoing his yard and he knew that I was you know, using flagstones and, and uh, he offered that I could just come and get as many as I needed. So I went ahead and I grabbed a bunch and brought them home and I created pathways throughout my yard and I brought in lots of manure, I brought in compost, and I brought in tons of bark. So I had it really good, looking really good two years ago. Everything was looking, well, was looking fine, but with Back to Eden, it's a continuous process because the soil and the organisms will consume that material, uh, i.e. making it fertile but it, it, it is eliminated in that landscape and so you need to bring more in and so that's my process issues. I'm going to show you what I did to start the process. I'm going to show you how I put it all together and then at the end of the video I'm going to show you what happened uh, two years later and, and how much bark I have left and what my project is this year to get this yard looking good again. So uh, stay tuned with me and uh, we'll check out what my yard looked like and what it looks like when it was at its best and then what it's kind of looked like at its worst right now. So my job is just getting started with spring around the corner. I'm going to be bringing in lots more bark and we're going to get it back in shape. But I've got some other ideas of how I'm going to change my landscape also. It's an ever evolving process and if you're if you were ever done you'd be bored. So I'm glad that I'm always you know having new ideas and and and, and just uh, all it takes is money and manpower. So here we go. Going back through old photos, I started to find some of just how my yard looked all in grass. And I didn't have any of the old, old ones. But here's one right before I started tearing up the grass and putting in the uh, back deed method. Basically, I have flower beds, vegetable beds, and then I just have a grass pathway kind of through the yard. Now, giving you the before and a quick after look, just to kind of tell you or show you how the difference is with a little bit of bark versus the grass and how it looks different before I jump into the process. First part was grass. This is just my lawn, just a mess. This was uh, early spring of 2019, and I just decided I was going to rip it all out. So I did it all by hand, 
I just took a shovel and with the help of my chickens, uh, cleaning up the bugs, I just basically dug in, flipped it over because uh, I didn't want to waste the organic matter and I don't, didn't have a lot of extra soil. So I just turned, basically spaded and turned over the grass, which will break down over time. Here Mr. Lincoln is enjoying the last of the grass and he's sitting there going, oh, he looks pretty shaggy today. Uh, he's wondering what's going on. So here's what it looks like after I've turned over the, the soil. Not very pretty, just brown, a lot of dirt. Uh, I, love, I, I love the look of dirt, but I definitely love the look of a, a more of a manicured landscape. But a lot of work. I did it over you know a couple months period of time. So if you're starting out with an unfinished backyard, you've already got to jump on it. You don't have to worry about all the dirt, all the grass. And in some places I put down some cardboard that I had. I didn't have a lot of cardboard, but then I put that down and I put down some manures and compost and then I placed the pavers. And as you see here, there's some manures on the side. I'm trying to make the soil as good as possible over time before I put down the bark. And uh, I used some compost and I raised the stones up a little bit because you know I don't want the, you know, in theory, I don't want the bark you know, always on top of the pavers. I want the pavers to be above the bark, but that's kind of a hit and miss kind of a proposition. But looks really sharp as it's going in and had just enough flagstones with my buddy's uh, extras to, to do through the yard as well as into the strawberry bed. Then after I did that, I started bringing in the uh, truckloads of bark. Just I just used the cedar bark. And here's some looks of just how the yard looks, uh, how much better it looks with just a, a coating of cedar bark. As, and these pictures are from various times uh, throughout the growing seasons of the last couple seasons. And it's just a totally different look. You know, instead of all that grass, it's just a, it's a wooded area. It just looks pretty. There's very little weed activity. And whatever weeds do grow, you can easily pull them out. But the contrast of the green growth with the brown of the, of the, of the wood chips is really, uh, I think it makes the yard pop. And then the flagstone pathways, you know, give it an interesting uh, uh, visual appeal also, as well as the functionality of, of having a place to walk and not get all muddy. And here's a look at my favorite espalier tree. Uh, it looks really pretty this time of the year. But I, as you see, I'm just growing vegetables all around and, and through the, the, the bark. And it just makes for a, you know, it's not manicured, but it, it, it cleans up pretty well. And being a more natural habitat, it, the quail were finally coming into my backyard, which hasn't been happening uh, before. The first year I brought in many, many truckloads of bark and I wasn't able to, to get six inches of bark. I probably got anywhere from two to, you know, two to six inches in, in various areas. Here's just look at some contrast of the green plants. Uh, these are some zucchinis uh, up against the bark. Now the bark does turn more of a brown color or gray color over time. So every time you add fresh, it's more of a, you know, orangish, but uh, it all settles in over time. But I like the look. I like the look of the green with the, with the brown. It really makes me feel like I'm more in a forest than I am in the, in the city. And I think the flagstone pathways just add that extra touch to the yard. It gives it some organization. Uh, that's lacking if it's just all uh, just bark and you want to keep your feet fairly uh, clean as you're out in the garden and when fall hits this is the big question i get of what do you do with all these leaves how do you get the leaves out of the bark well what i do is i just leave them i kind of brush them up into the flower beds but then i let the chickens out and i let them eat all the bad bugs good bugs or whatever they can find they kick the bark all over the place as you see here, this buff Orpington is taking a nice little uh, dust bath. So they tear the yard up pretty bad. But So the yard looks terrible during the winter because uh, I just let them free range and I just let them have at it uh, because it is important with bark, with all that moisture to, to get the bugs taken care of. So the chickens love it. They add more fertility, but they make a mess. And every time I come out of the house, they're always waiting for me, looking for food, looking for a handout. But uh, they do destroy the yard, but that's okay because I can put it all back together again. Pretty simply. After taking a leaf blower to the yard, this is this spring, just a couple weeks ago, I took this video. And just showing you that I just took the blower and I just, just, just moved stuff off into the pathways. I did pick some up and put it in the chicken coop. I did put some in a compost bin uh, with some of the uh, chicken pen mix and the hen house mix. I'm uh, gonna make uh, this year, this fall's compost, as you see there. But the yard still looks pretty messy. And as you'll see that there's 
a lot missing in the way of bark. There's still some bark around, but you can see where the bark was thinner, probably the more the two inches rather than the six inches, and the soil has consumed it or it's been moved. So I've got to bring in lots of bark. Now, another thing you notice here is the, peg, the flagstone pavers have sunk. And, you know, that's just normal over time, as well as the dirt. I'll keep it, you know, building the dirt up. Well, that means that my paths are going to get buried if I don't continue to raise these uh, flagstones up. So this year, I'm going to be removing dirt uh, from the chicken coop, and I'm going to grab a bucket or two and just dig the stones out, flip them over, raise them up, and then uh, put the stones back, raise them, you know, maybe, you know, four inches, and then I'm going to bring more, more bark in. Uh, but I'll definitely raise the stones in increments before I bring bark in because that's important. Or I'll just end up with a mess and I'll just end up with a whole yard where you can't see the path. And that's not what I want. But So there's always maintenance with bringing bark and raising your, your pathways because they will settle over time and being walked on. It's just a, it, and as the organic matter breaks down, the, the flagstones will settle in. Most people fail with this type of landscaping when they don't bring in extra bark because it's something you always have to do. So if I don't bring bark in this year, what am I going to have? I'm just going to have weeds everywhere. So I've got to get on this this spring and get her taken care of. Now, one concept I want to make sure that I mention uh, is that you never mix wood chips into the soil. So when you want to plant something, you just pull the wood chips back to bare soil, dig your hole, plant your plant, and then pull your bark back as a mulch. If you were to bury the wood chips, then you basically bind up all the nitrogen in the soil, trying to break down the, the carbon in the wood chips, and it'll just, it'll just make your plants really weak and they'll start turning yellow and die. So you don't wanna do that. So always remember, don't mix wood chips in your soil. They are a top covering. They're a layer like, uh, like lasagna. They're not to be mixed in as ingredients into the soil. Now here we are this morning. I just wanted to give you a look at what it looks like with a little bit of snow. Uh, most uh, Because the flagstones have been fairly warm, uh, the weather's been decent up until today, the snow just melts off of them. You know, there's a few that are covered up, but uh, overall, uh, the pathways are still pretty evident in, in small snowstorms. When it gets snows quite a bit, they get buried, but they're the first thing to uh, thaw out as they do collect heat, solar heat from the sun. Looking at the weather forecast, it's supposed to be a cold and off and on snowy week. I'm starting to get stir crazy. I'm you know, kind of chomping at the bit to get going on gardening projects. So took a little stroll through the yard and just kind of try to get my mind square. As you saw some, some block wall, wall block on the left there, barely. Uh, you, uh, that's my next project and that'll be a, a video that's coming up, one of the newer videos that I'll be doing on a, on a current project. But, but I do need to bring bark in and uh, and once this uh, snow melts off, which will take, you know, just hours once the sun comes out, we'll get uh, start getting back to work and, uh, and getting this yard looking good again. Well, thanks for watching today's video. I hope it was enjoyable for you and gave you some maybe some ideas on how you can uh, be water wise in a in a in a dry urban environment. I live in Salt Lake City, Utah, and we are, you know, we've had a pretty good snow year, but it's going to take many, you know, equally good snow years to get out of this drought. You know, everywhere we turn, I'm also a realtor, there's just housing going up everywhere. Uh, the housing market's crazy, there's lots of people moving in. I don't know where the water's going to come from, but it's not, it's not going to get better, it's going to get worse. So you, we've, uh, if I want to continue to garden, I've got to continue to do it in a way that conserves water and uh, maintains that moisture in the soil. Now, I'm feeling pretty good today about my progress on YouTube. I've been almost going for a year, and I've got triple digit you know, subscribers. I've got 75 videos. This is number 75. So I feel like I've put in the effort at this point and have the library that I can now kind of put out a, you know, kind of a call to action for everybody. If, if you like these videos that I'm presenting, uh, please subscribe, like, share, and comment. I see a lot of these channels are always saying that every video and it's just, I don't want to be that guy. But it'd be nice to be able to grow a little bit and uh, I don't do a lot of call to action stuff. But I'd like my channel to grow. Um, I'd like to continue, and I will be continuing to bring a lot of content. So if you like what I'm doing and uh, want to support me, uh, just please subscribe, like, share, and throw me a comment now and then. Uh, be gentle, uh, <laughs> or not, it's, uh, it's up to you. But I enjoy reading those comments, and uh, I'm here to help. So if you have any questions, any suggestions, or anything that I can help you with, please let me know. But thanks for your support, and I hope this channel continues to grow. And there, I've got lots on the plate this year, so uh, 
I hope you follow this journey of living my best rural life in the city because it's going to keep getting and keep getting and keep getting more and more interesting. So thank you for your time, and I hope you guys have a great time in the, in the spring garden.